my god. I haven't been recording this whole time. Welcome back to Ever This Movie Ever. My name is Justin. I'm watching Ever This Movie Ever. Today I'm going to talk about Candle Shoe. Candle Shoe is a 1977 theatrical release. It's directed by Norman Till Carson, a photography by Paul Beeson, editing by Peter Boyda, music by Ron Goodwin. It's written by David Swift and Rosemary Ann Sisson, and it's based off a book called Christmas at Candle Shoe by Michael and Ness. Norman Till Carr is known for all of his Disney credits, my favorite being those Calloways. I covered Paul Beeson, Ron Goodwin, and Rosemary Ann Sisson in the video I made about the Littlest Horse Thieves. The link is in the description. Peter Boyda is most known for Aliens, The Jewel of the Nile, Leonard Part 6, and The Little Indians. David Swift is most known for How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying, Pollyanna, and The Parent Trap. He directed both Pollyanna and The Parent Trap, and he was set to direct this film, but he took a step down because he thought Jodie Foster was all wrong for the part of Casey. The film stars Jodie Foster, David Niven, Helen Hayes, and Leo McKern. Jodie Foster plays Casey Brown, and I covered her in the video I made about Napoleon Samantha, so if you want to learn all about her, go watch that video. The link is in the description. David Niven plays Priory and Gipping. John Henry and Colonel Dennis and I covered him and his history in the video I made about no deposit no return so if you want to learn all about him go watch that video the link is in the description. Helen Hayes plays Lady St. Edmund this is her final film role ever I covered her and her history in the video I made about Herbie Rides Again so if you want to learn all about her the link is in the description. Leo McKern is best known for Help A Man For All Seasons Ryan's Daughter and The Blue Lagoon. This film is hailed as a cult classic. Compton Wynne Yates of Warwickshire home of Spencer 7th Marquis of Northampton serves as the fictional estate of Candleshoe. There was a time during pre-production when Laurence Olivier was set to play Priory. The opening title sequence of this film is an incredible introduction into Jodie Foster's character. <laughs> The cinematography and set decoration in this film are prime. This film is Anastasia mixed with the Goonies, but not as good as either of them. Still good, but not as good as either of those movies. Casey Brown and Harry Bundage try to fool Lady St. Edmund into thinking that Casey is her long lost granddaughter, which seems very plausible because she has the same scars, etc. And then at the same time, there's a treasure hunt <laughs> in throughout the movie. There's a treasure hunt for a long lost pirate's treasure in the house candle shoe. So it's kind of those two mixed together and there are kids that end up helping look for this treasure. So it's very Goonies meets Anastasia, just not as good. David Niven playing all of those different characters was hysterical, gave me very big Count Olaf vibes. It was just so well done and really, really funny. I had a lot of hope for this movie going into it before even knowing a single piece about it because David Swift and Rosemary Anson both had hands in writing it. And David Swift worked on Pollyanna and The Parent Trap. And Rosemary Ann Sisson has been knocking it out of the park for me, Ride a Wild Pony and The Littlest Horse Thieves. Hello. This is probably Rosemary Ann Sisson's most famous Disney film, which is so disappointing for me because Ride a Wild Pony and The Littlest Horse Thieves, I think are better than this movie. I still think this movie is really well done and really entertaining and I would definitely watch it again, but Ride a Wild Pony and The Littlest Horse Thieves just have my heart and soul because of how well they were written. Rosemary knocked it out of the park and I think working with David, David has a very different like lighthearted but also heartbreaking where like Rosemary's more just heartbreaking. <laughs> and it was a really well done film. I really liked it but I think my favorite Rosemary and Sisson film is Ride a Wild Pony or The Littlest Horse Thieves. They're both so well done. And then David Swift, my favorite of his Pollyanna, hands down Pollyanna was so good. But I had a lot of hopes for this movie and then when as I started watching it I'm like this is some Anastasia stuff. Like Hello, Don Bluth. You went and made Anastasia when this had some very serious Anastasia vibes. And then it had some treasure hunting vibes. This is the best treasure hunting movie yet, though. Remember Treasure of Matacumbe when I got so excited because I was like, are we actually gonna have a treasure hunting movie where there's clues and they have to figure out riddles and they just have to go step by step by step? 
No, it wasn't, it was so boring. This actually had clues and riddles that they had to figure out. It was a little easy. It wasn't as cool as the Goonies, but they did have to follow clues and it was very exciting and they did find the treasure in an epic way. There wasn't like a stupid fight. I mean, there was a stupid fight right beforehand, but it was very motivated. And it wasn't like Treasure Matacumbe, which was literally about hunting treasure. This is a lot more going on. Classic Rosemary and Sisson. Anyway, I digress. At the climax of the film, right when they find the treasure, a Pirate's Life for Me theme plays. Not like, you know, like it doesn't do the singing, but Ron Goodwin put in a stinger of a Pirate's Life for Me as the treasure starts to fall out of the statue. And it was so prime. I think you guys know at this point that I am obsessed with motivated decisions in filmmaking. So a motivated dolly movement and of any kind, a super motivated effect, super motivated blocking, I don't know, just anything that is absolutely appropriate for the writing, I'm obsessed with, and I don't like when it's not motivated. So say just all of a sudden it's storming because everyone is sad, that makes me kind of mad sometimes. It just does, because it's obvious that they just want it to be raining because they're sad, or they're mad, or whatever. This film does such a good job of setting up a thunderstorm during a farmer's market scene that's very happy, and then moving on to a scene that's very dramatic, that I was like, oh my gosh, the rain is so motivated. They did such a great job with this. This scene is incredible. The lighting, the lighting effects, the rain, Everything in the scene that I have playing or will play maybe without me in it for you is so motivated and so good. I was so obsessed with the decision to have it rain before and then going into the scene, it's already raining. It doesn't start during the scene. It doesn't, it's just such a great decision. It's so, so well done. stuff in the village market, eh? Buy my eggs, small, large, brown, white, boil them, fry them, watch all that. Well, uh, I gotta, I gotta pretend, you know, like I'm one of the family, don't I? You've got to find that treasure, that's what you've got to do, and no mucking about, you hear? What does Eclipse mean, do you hear? Well, uh, I don't know just yet, but I'm working on it, I really am. Try it. Children. It's me, Casey, uh, Margaret. You keep that old lady out of here or she gets it with this. Now get rid of her. Oh, Margaret, my dear. Oh, I'm so glad you're back safely. Where are the others? They're still in town with Priory. In this dreadful weather? They'll be back pretty soon. Every time there's an electrical storm, our lights go dead. Priory always knows how to fix them, though. What we do without him, I can't imagine. Oh, I must go and dress for dinner. Hey, what are you doing with that? What's it look like? I'm taking it, ain't I? Yeah, but that's the money for the taxes. That money's going to save my eye. It'll help to feed the loan sharks. Say you were attacked by a burglar when you went back. Yeah, but if, if they don't pay the taxes, then, then they'll have to leave, and then I won't be able to search for any more clues. So much the better. We'll have the place to ourselves to ransack from top to bottom. Harry! You keep working on that eclipse. I won't let you. Oh, Harry! You, you can bar me! Get out of it! The thing that upset me the most about this movie was that we never find out if she's actually her granddaughter. It, they all bond and they all become a family, so she wants to keep her regardless, but we never find out for sure if it's her granddaughter. And that really upsets me because I wanna know. I don't wanna be left with that question. I know it doesn't matter because they're all a family and I know she would stay anyway. Like, I'm happy with that ending, but I wanna know if she's actually her granddaughter or not. Like. Hello? That was a giant question. She had the same scars. She may or may not have had a memory or just faked that memory. I don't know, but 
I'm like, hello, I want to know so badly if she was actually the granddaughter. I think Jodie Foster did an incredible job in this film as well as everyone else. I also wanna shout out the kids, the kids she was with a lot of the time were also incredible, specifically Clooney. The girl who played Clooney was in a constant state of tears in a lot of scenes and that was so impressive to me because she's a teenager who's like always looking like she's about to cry in a lot of these scenes. It was just, oh, I was so impressed with them. Now we have a predicament <laughs> because we don't know if Casey, Jodie Foster's character, is actually related to these people. She's an orphan. We know that. And, but we don't know if she's actually this woman's granddaughter. And that's never answered. We trick her into thinking Casey is her granddaughter and she has the same scars, but we don't know for sure if she's her granddaughter, which means we don't know for sure if there's a parent death. They do say on screen that the mother of the missing granddaughter passed away after she was kidnapped. Nothing about the father. There's no mention of the father. But we know for sure the mom died. But we don't know for sure if that's Casey's mom. So we have a predicament, you guys. And then if that's not Casey's mom, we absolutely have no idea what happened to Casey's parents. Casey's just some random orphan that Harry Bundage picked up off the street because she looked like the whole Margaret. Margaret is the Anastasia. So I'm in a predicament here, you guys. It's never answered if she's actually the granddaughter. So I think I have to say there were no parent deaths in this film, which is kind of difficult because they do talk about a parent death on screen, but we don't know for sure if it's Casey because that's never specifically for sure answered. Literally the last lines of the movie are, what if your real granddaughter shows up? And the grandmother says, what if she already has? And that's where we're left. We have, it's never answered for real. So I think we have to go with no parent deaths. I really enjoyed this movie, but I don't think it was extraordinary. It's not on the same level as The Littlest Horse Thieves or Almost Angels or Rose Calloway's, but it wasn't bad at all. I really enjoyed this movie. I would buy it. I'd watch it again. I would watch it with other people. I thought this movie was really fun. So I think I'm gonna give it seven doubloons out of 10, our total movie count is. Parent death toll and cry count are still the same. If you wanna keep up with what movie I'm watching when, follow me on Instagram or Twitter and you'll find out what movie I'm watching when. I put out videos every Monday and Friday. Until next time, comment, like, and subscribe, but I'm not sure if you are, so you do you, and don't be hairy bondage about it. Follow me on Instagram or Twitter. I just almost died.